All right, setting up the oxygen tank. Your oxygen tank, you want to make sure that it has the color scheme, green, silver, and has a diamond placarding that says oxygen. You should also have this US pharmaceutical grade type oxygen, USP. There's a lot of different types of green oxygen carrying devices out there, but they're not medical grade oxygen. So this is for use in a medical setting. It's not like a, a for automotive or so mechanic. You really want to keep this in a container or a holding device. You definitely don't leave it standing alone by itself for long periods. Keep it away from open flame, no petroleum products, and no oil lubricant. We're going to continue to <coughs> attach our regulator and regulator assembly. So we have a regulator, it has a pressure gauge, it has a flow meter on here, and we have a couple pigtails on this. One connects up to a vent, and the other one's called a pressure, positive pressure device or an elder valve. Know that you have to be able to understand the regulator assembly and your oxygen tank. There's a washer usually in this area <coughs> that'll seal the tank together and it has a special type of uh, locking mechanism called a pin and index. This all lines up. So to connect our oxygen tank to our regulator assembly, we're going to purge the, the tank to clear any debris from the opening. This is just a quick turn to allow that debris to come out. Once we know that that's open, we're going to line up our pin and index system, tighten in the regulator assembly to the oxygen tank. We're going to turn on our oxygen tank and make sure that the gauge is pointed away from us just in case that might break. We're going to open it all the way we're going to do a quarter turn back. Then we're going to recognize how much oxygen we have in there and whether or not we need to have this to be uh, replaced. Now we usually replace this at about 250 to 500 where it says in the red you're overused. Now it depends on how far you are as far as the logistics be a unit that may be 20 miles 40 miles away may decide to change that at 500 instead of 250 may even decide that a thousand is something that they want as they might be using high powered oxygen devices. Oxygen tank is now assembled. <clears throat> this means now that we can continue on with delivering oxygen to our patient. One of the first oxygen delivery equipment is called the nasal cannula. This will increase our room oxygen from 21 all the way up to about 44% oxygen. <clears throat> These prongs go into the nasal passageways. The tab rests against the top of the lip. We connect our tubing up to our tank. We're then given an order to set this at 4 liters by nasal cannula and administer the patient. We turn the oxygen tank on and we make sure that we have our flow meter at 4 liters. We do not want to place the nasal cannula onto the patient and then turn our flow meter on. This will cause the air to burst out and cause irritating gas to flow into the patient's nostrils and it will upset them. Once we have the oxygen on, we go ahead and place the, the prongs into the nasal passageways and the tip that the tab lays against the top of the, the lip. Go ahead and place your tubing around the ears and then we're going to draw it up on the drawstring. Now what happens is that our patients will tolerate this but because of the type of medical emergency they're suffering from this may be inadequate amount of oxygen being delivered at the time. And what may be ordered would be let's change this nasal cannula to give them a higher flow concentration by a non-rebreather mask. So in the time being we're going to make sure that you get your non-rebreather mask out and in this case this is not a non rebreather it's like a partial. A non rebreather mask would have a valve on both sides. This is a partial non rebreather as it only has one flapper valve on one side. It also has a reservoir bag that has to be inflated. If we can, we'd like to pre-oxygenate this from another device. If not, we're just going to discontinue this oxygen from our patient. We're going to connect this up and make sure that we set our flow setting 10 to 15 liters. We're going to increase this until we get the, the reservoir bag entirely filled. And then we're going to tell our patient we're going to give you some oxygen and place this over their face and place it in the band around their head. We can also cinch down around the nose and make sure that everything kind of sits well. If the oxygen in this bag becomes depleted with each ventilation, that means that the patient's respiratory effort drive in volume is much bigger capacity than the capacity of this bag which would mean we need to increase our flow volume from our flow liter from 10 to 15 to maybe all the way open to 25 or flush. Our patient may not tolerate this mask as well as they become more epoxic and require more oxygen. We would then have to discontinue this oxygen 
and we can then go to some kind of bag valve mass device or we can use what's called a positive pressure device or an elder valve <clears throat> make a CE technique see over the, the over our mask and E underneath the chin we're going to use the hip tilt chin lift and seal the mask and this we would depress for about one second to one and a half seconds now we're going to let this air go in and out and we're doing one breath every five to six seconds or 10 to 12 breaths per minute what we'd really like to do is have a better feel for how much oxygen that we are delivering this allows us to feel the compliance when we ventilate and it's hard for us to push in and mean mean that they're breathing back or that there's an obstruction so we want to feel this compliance do the same thing by sealing the mask to the face using the hip tilt chin lift the CE technique we're going to ventilate and make sure we get a good rise and fall of chest every time we ventilate for a patient this is important that we get this ventilation going within 30 seconds of, of uh, determining our patient needs to have positive pressure. During this time, we can have our second respirators connect us up to our oxygen tank. Or during our breaths, we're going to have to somehow get this and connect this up to our oxygen tank and turn our flow meter on to a high flow rate setting. So our second respirator can take over ventilation for us. Uh, we change over turn our flow meter on to 15 liters or more and then we're going to watch our rise and fall we're going to monitor our pulse and check the pulse oximetry <clears throat> again this is the reservoir bag so oxygen is coming from here whenever we squeeze or depress the bag as we ventilate the air that goes in is 100 percent oxygen all that rest of the oxygen is back here fills up in this bag and as you can tell when we ventilate and I release the air from here the oxygen from here is going to go into this bag that's all we have we're just giving them 100% oxygen whatever's going directly from this bag into there now if we take this off and we're no longer connected up to oxygen we are then ventilating with room air only room air only All right, some complications that can happen when we're using a positive pressure device like this or a positive pressure elder valve is that will cause the stomach to become inflated and cause gastric distension which will displace the gastric contents and things will come back up through both the airway and the esophagus compromising the airway and they could aspirate and then we'll have to suction and clear the airway out. 